One of the most common ways that people log into their servers with the traditional username and password. In this video, we're gonna look at a much more secure and convenient way that does not use passwords at all, and that's with the public and private key pair. If you've never heard of a public key, private key pair before, don't worry, we'll talk about exactly what it is and how it works when we go to make one. So let's get started. So to start, I've made a fresh new virtual machine located at this IP, and I've done absolutely nothing to it, just a plain old vanilla VM that I created about 10 minutes ago. If I try to log in using SSH to this IP as normal, it will ask me for a password. I'll then supply the password that they gave me when I created the virtual machine, and then it'll log me into the computer. But before we get to that, we have to do a couple things on our local machine. The first step to setting up password as login is to actually create our public key private key pair. We'll start by creating our public and private key pair using a command called ssh-keygen-t rsa. And this command should work on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows 10. If it doesn't work on Windows, you may have to get the SSH client optional feature from Windows. But once you run this, it will say where it's gonna make the key. In this case, it's going to be your home directory dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA. And it's also gonna create one ID underscore RSA dot pub. Now it will ask you if you want to use a passphrase. I personally do not use one because I like to do automated things with my SSH key. And if I use a passphrase, then I, I can't do that. So you can make the choice whether you want to do that or not. So I'm going to supply nothing, supply nothing again, and then it's going to create my public key, private key. If I cd into the .ssh directory, I can see now there's two files. Well, three, but known host is not relevant to us right now. So idrsa is your private key and idrsa.pub is your public key. And the way these two things work is your private key and your public key are cryptographically linked together. And this means that there's ways to verify that a public key is indeed a public key for a given private key. And the way this relates to logging into a server is rather than supplying a password to the server, you instead supply your public key to the server. And this public key is stored permanently on the server. So at login through the authentication process, all it's really doing is verifying that you possess a private key, which is cryptographically linked to one of the public keys that's allowed access to the server. For setting up password as login, you don't really need to know exactly how the handshake works, but for those who are curious, I'll explain it now. The handshake is more or less a four-step process. Step one is the server starts by sending down its public key along with an encrypted message that was encrypted using your public key. Step two is your client will attempt to decrypt that message using your private key. And because your private key and public key are cryptographically linked, you'll be able to decrypt it. Step three is your client will re-encrypt that message using the server's public key that it sent down in step one. And then following step four, the server will attempt to decrypt that message using its private key and then verify that the message that it gets once decrypted is the same one that it sent originally. If the message does indeed match, then the server knows that you possess the private key that relates to one of the public keys and you are then granted access to the server and the login succeeds. Just so you can see what the public key looks like, we're gonna cat this idrsa.pub. And that's gonna be our public key right here. Now keep in mind, the public key is indeed public. You can share it with anybody you want, servers, it doesn't matter. There's absolutely no security concern with giving it away. So even if this wasn't a throwaway key, it's perfectly okay for everybody to have this. The next thing we need to do is actually get this public key to our cloud server. There's two typical ways to do this. There's an automated way you can do it using the command ssh-copy-id, but we're going to do it the manual way just because it's more educational. So to start, log into your server using your typical password. So I'll do ssh root at, take my IP, and then use the password that they supplied me. And now I'm in the server. If you're not already in your home directory, hit CD and hit enter to get there. If you don't want to SSH to the root user, then this would be the time to log into the proper user. Next, we need to get into our .ssh folder. Now, you may already have one, but if you don't, you'll need to make a .ssh folder and set the permissions to 700. And then CD into your .ssh folder. Inside here, you should have a file called authorized underscore keys. If you do not have one, go ahead and make one and set the permissions to 600. The permissions for the SSH folder and the permissions for the authorized key file is very important. If the permissions are not proper, then it's not going to let you log in. Once you have the authorized underscore keys file made, go ahead and open it using your favorite editor and then paste in your public key into it. Once you've pasted your public key in, go ahead and exit your editor and then exit your server. At this point, everything's good to go and you should be able to log into your server without using a password. So to test this, run your SSH command again, hit enter, and hopefully it logs in without you having to supply a password. The last thing we have to do now is just disable password logins altogether, not even allow them anymore. Now it's very important that you do this step, making sure that you can log in without a password before you disable password logins. 
if you don't configure everything properly and you disable password logins and your public key private key authentication doesn't work, then you'll actually lock yourself out of your server. To disable password logins, we'll have to open up the SSH daemon configuration file, which is located at slash etsy slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. There's a number of different settings in this file, but we're interested in three in total that deal with password logins. The first is going to be password authentication. Currently it's set to yes, you're going to want to set it to no. Second is challenge response authentication. If this is not already set to no, you should set it to no as well. And the last one is use PAM. Right now it's set to yes, we want to go ahead and set that to no. At this point, go ahead and save and exit. Because we modified the configuration file, we have to actually restart the SSH daemon to make that take effect. For me, that command is system ctl restart sshd. Now to verify password logins are in fact disabled, go ahead and log out of your server and then just try to connect to some other random user. As you can see, it did not even give me an option to enter a password, which is exactly what we wanted. Now keep in mind that public key private key pairs are per user on a system. So right now I'm able to log in without a password. No problem, logs me right in. But if I actually log out of the EM user and back to the Brian user and I run this exact same thing, then you'll notice that it's not going to let me in. It's going to say permission denied. And that's because the Brian user on my machine has a private key which does not have a corresponding public key that's on the server. So to log in, I have to switch users to my EM user, supply the password, and then I can log in with no problem. Now remember I said we copied our public key to our server using the manual way, but there's also an easier way. I just wanted to show that real quick. So to transfer your public key to the server the easy way, you just run ssh-copy ID, specify the username, and then the IP, and then it will do the rest for you. And as you can see, it says all keys were skipped because they already exist in the system because we did it manually. Disabling password logins is a really good idea, and here's a perfect example why. I just logged into a cloud server that has password logins enabled and I haven't done so in about 33 days. I last logged into this machine on August 9th. And in that 33 days, there were 66,704 failed login attempts. And that's because there's bad actors. They are constantly scanning IP ranges on the entire internet looking for machines that have SSH open with passwords allowed with some low hanging fruit like a root account with the password of root or an admin account with the password of admin or common names with the password of that particular name. They're not really looking to brute force passwords or anything. They're just looking for low hanging fruit. They want to just find people who made a mistake in their setup or messed up a configuration or used a password that's the same name as the account. And I guarantee you they find a lot of these on the web. Anyway, that's all there is to it. This is a really simple way to add a pretty big layer of security to your cloud server and make it a lot more convenient for yourself since you don't have to remember a password anymore. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. All right, and that, have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.